Stephen Colbert here. Sorry to interrupt your YouTube binging, but I've got an important announcement. I'm also an executive producer of Stephen Colbert Presents Tuning Out the News. I know. What are the odds? Anyway, back to binging. Top story. Our nation's perfect spectacle of racism and violence, the Super Bowl, was tainted on Sunday when woke commercials, many for godless electric vehicles, somehow pirated the broadcast. They completely violated the sanctity of the Super Bowl ads, which should teach viewers that patriotism and alcoholism go hand in hand. Now let's bring in our guest who got heckled so much as a stand-up comedian that she retreated to a successful TV and movie career, Tig Notaro. What's up, Tig? <laughs> oh, just, you know, hanging out, tigging it up. That is tigging awesome. So, Tig, you're a Mississippi-born, Texas-raised coastal elitist. I assume you loved the woke Super Bowl ads. Is that correct? Oh, gosh. Um... Well, you know, I, I personally uh, am looking at electric vehicles, and I, I'm curious what the problem is. You really feel strongly that this is not the right decision for people to be um, saving our planet? Look what electricity did to Frankenstein. Those woke ads were an abomination. Give me humanoid beer cans smashing into each other, subconsciously signaling to fans that players are garbage to be disposed of. You know, at least there were 50 ads for Jesus. It's about time he got more attention than all of it. Moving on, Tig, I cannot believe children watched Rihanna's performance that conveyed the dangerous idea that women are powerful. Shouldn't they have aired a Republican rebuttal performance by Senator Ron Johnson? I wish I could speak more to this, but I was having a huge Super Bowl party, which um, I have every year in order to not have to watch the Super Bowl. But uh, I'm all about women empowerment. I mean, look at me in my um, flannel shirt and my short haircut. I don't know if I'm the right person to talk to about this. It promoted the idea that pregnant women should put on big budget Super Bowl halftime shows outside the home. Yeah, and I can personally confirm it is just as offensive on full speed, half speed, and God forbid, 0.25 speed. God forbid. Now moving on to a new thing. Tig, you host a podcast called True Story, a documentary podcast featuring you and Gregory Hines discussing <laughs> documentaries. But we noticed you It's not Gregory. No. What? It's Cheryl Hines. Oh, oh, my it bad. It is Cheryl oh. Hines. My That's bad. That's unfortunate. Okay. Cheryl Hines. Okay, my bad. But we noticed you've overlooked some of the riveting documentaries produced by the Hot Take Documentary Unit, and I'm going to pitch you some of our work, and you tell me if we're going to make the podcast. Okay, are you ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. First documentary is called Uncanceling Mussolini. I don't see. I don't see that one getting covered. Okay. What about Dan Bongino Dreams of Sushi? Uh, we'll, we'll consider that one. Okay, getting better. Well, okay, next up is Geraldo sort of, sh sort of shuffles around his house. We will for sure cover that one. The documentary would have to be footage of Geraldo wandering around and then a lot of talking heads discussing him wandering around. Okay, we can work on that. So far, we just snuck into his house and got his shoes kind of scooting. But, well, here's another one. Okay. What about, this one is called, just straight up Islamophobia. Yeah, we're gonna have to cover that. Okay. Do you know who's in it? Oh, about a billion people. Okay, what about, what What if Jesus played for the Yankees? Yes, I think we actually covered that one. And finally, Sperm Wars Part 9, the microwave popcorn dilemma. Mmm, I've heard this come up a lot. Uh, so it seems like the people want to hear that. So yeah, we do that. All right, that's great. You know what? I'm just going to email you the rest. We make 92 documentaries a week. 